Diagnosis is one of those terms that gets floated around all the time in medicine, but what does the term actually mean? Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a third year medical student studying at Warwick Medical School on the graduate entry programme. So today we're going to be talking about what a diagnosis is, what it means you know, within society, what it means for the medical world, and ultimately what it means for a patient. The word diagnosis actually appeared in the modern lexicon in kind of the late 17th century, coming from the Greek root word, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce, meaning to discern or to distinguish something, particularly in the context of setting something apart from something else. In the medical world, the, the verb to diagnose means for a doctor or another health professional to ultimately decide based on evidence, clinical experience and so on, what illness or condition a person has and ultimately what's the cause of their problems. You're essentially deciding what the cause is of the symptoms that they are experiencing or claim to experience. So how do we diagnose? Any doctor, we'll just consider this through the lens of doctors for the time being, has an immense array of tools at their disposal. So any given consultation with a patient includes taking a full proper clinical history, both of their presenting complaint, the thing that is wrong with them right now, combined with other information such as medical problems that they've had before or maybe medicines that they already take in order to make another diagnosis get better. You need to know about family history, genetic disorders, if they're allergic to anything, what they do for a living. You're basically trying to gather as much information as possible just through conversation with them and asking them what they think is wrong. And then this is normally followed by an appropriate physical exam. So if someone comes in and says, my tummy hurts doc, you'll probably perform an abdominal exam, a generalized physical examination of the gastrointestinal tract and the abdomen, as well as giving them a quick once over for vital observation signs. Then once they've done that and they've got an idea of one or maybe several diagnoses that it could be, they can then order additional investigations, which might be things like blood tests, you could order imaging such as x-rays or CT scans, or you can ask for an investigative procedure, something like endoscopy or bronchoscopy to be performed. Then all of this is done in the hopes of gradually gathering more and more information to enable that doctor to make the right diagnosis first time, or particularly to reject the possibility of dangerous alternatives. So it might be the case, for example, that you don't really care what someone has in the short term as long as they don't have cancer or a bleeding vessel somewhere. A lot of the time it's trying to rule out dangerous possibilities. So after all this, what's the value in a diagnosis? Most obviously, first and foremost, the answer lies in treatment as well as management and reassurance of whatever condition they have in the long term. Because obviously if we know what the problem is, in the first instance we can then start to take steps and put things in place to help treat the cause of the problem. If a patient has an infection, we can give them antibiotics to sort out the infection. If they have a trapped nerve, perhaps in one of their limbs, we can offer them surgery to release it. And it may, of course, be the case that with many illnesses, the patient simply gets better on their own with time, but they still might need a doctor to reassure them that that's gonna happen, otherwise they're gonna be sitting there stressing about this mystery condition thinking they might die tomorrow. So the point I'm trying to get at is, almost regardless of the instance or situation, there is pretty much always value in knowing what the underlying cause is, whether or not there's a treatment. Because even in a condition with no cure, many autoimmune diseases such as lupus or type one diabetes, for example, there is actually societal value in being able to tell a person what problem they have because their condition or problem now has a label that they can understand and apply to themselves or to their condition, because obviously people aren't defined by their conditions, which we'll talk about more in a moment, they can perhaps seek other people with the same or similar problems in order to find a sense of community and get shared support, which is really, really important. You could use the example of children with autism spectrum disorder, for example, because if you're able to obtain that diagnosis in a timely manner, it might be the case that specialist services and pots of money for school support are actually available to help that child, at least through the early stages of their life. And actually having the diagnosis on paper from a doctor can help streamline that process enormously. And the other thing to be aware of is that it may be the case that certain therapies, even if they're not curative, for a particular condition are only available to people that have been diagnosed with that particular condition. That is to say that they've been medically diagnosed by a doctor formally and they have the written evidence to prove it. 
because the NHS is very bureaucratic at the best of times and often having written formal documentation of a diagnosis is a really important thing for patients to have, particularly for example if they need time off work or readjusted responsibilities in the workplace. It's also very possible that having a diagnosis could be a negative experience for a patient. This might be either because the diagnostic process itself is rigorous and very difficult to experience. You can imagine if someone needs to be diagnosed with something like post-traumatic stress disorder, a lot of the diagnostic process is going to be reliving these very painful and traumatic experiences, which won't be pleasant. It's also the case that certain groups of conditions are often very heavily stigmatized within society, which has historically been the case for many, many mental conditions. Things like bipolar disorder, depression, schizophrenia, for example, or maybe something like sexually transmitted infections, things like chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes, just because sometimes they can have this misplaced association with either unclean or kind of deviant behavior. In that case, obviously, a patient may prefer that that label were not actually ascribed to them, particularly by another person, like a doctor, without their consent or permission. Imagine going into a psychiatric consult for the first time, not knowing what was wrong with you or what was the cause of your problems, and suddenly being told that you have schizophrenia and you can be psychotic. And the other thing to consider is that a very serious sounding diagnosis, something like cancer or depression, can hugely affect the mental state of a patient because they've got to come to terms with that label. As I said, that you may have given them without them fully understanding kind of the weight of what you were about to tell them, something that they might have to deal with for the rest of their lives. So while it's obviously important that a patient does get their accurate, honest diagnosis with an explanation from you as their doctor, you still have to be sensitive about it because that person's knowledge of what that condition actually means or their own preconceived notions about people with that condition or what living with those conditions might be like will play a huge part in how they react to it. Then the last thing I want to talk about is the phenomenon of self-diagnosis. While of course this applies to any member of the population, in this context I'm talking about people with no degree of medical or health training coming to their own conclusions about what's wrong with them. I think the gut reaction of many people is to think this is a bad thing. Obviously people need accurate, experienced judgment from a clinical professional. That's why we encourage people to go to the doctors. But in many cases, we actually do assume that most of the general population has the health knowledge and the wherewithal to work out that they might need to buy paracetamol to get rid of their headache, or hay fever tablets to get rid of their stuffy nose or head lice shampoo, for example, you assume that most people can recognize if they or their child has head lice and can seek out appropriate treatment by themselves without ever seeing a medical professional. The danger obviously lies in situations where people make significant choices or lifestyle changes based around a diagnosis that's potentially wrong. Or perhaps they mistake a psychological problem for a physical illness or a physical illness for a psychological problem because there's huge degrees of overlap. You can imagine that this might even escalate another level if you have a medical professional who's actually misdiagnosed themselves and starts taking drugs or seeking surgery, for example. And that's why it's always really important, even as a medical professional, not to diagnose your friends or family and not to diagnose yourself because our own intrinsic biases come into play and we're more likely to make mistakes. So even doctors need to go through the health service. There we go guys, that's an exploration of what is a diagnosis and what's its value. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free medical interview question videos just like this one. Thanks for watching guys. There are three ways you can support the channel. The first one is to like, comment, subscribe, share this video with a friend, just enjoy it generally. Second, you can buy me a coffee if you found it useful using my Ko-Fi link, which will help keep me awake during the editing process. And then thirdly, you can use my referral link to save 10% off your first year of Complete Anatomy 2020, my favorite 3D anatomy learning tool. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time.